What's up guys and welcome back to another video. You are back with me in my Porsche 991.2 Turbo S which I've had for a few months now and I've done about 5,000 kilometers in and that's given me time to reflect on five things I hate, five things I really don't like that slightly bug me about my Turbo S because obviously you know I love this car but there's you know, no car's perfect and there's always a few things that you don't fall completely in love with. So. First things first, we're going to fill it up because the tank is pretty much empty. We're going to clean it because the car is filthy. And then we're going to go for a drive and we're going to explain to you those things that I haven't quite enjoyed as much as the rest. Look at this coincidence, just around at the car wash, did the inside of the car, but there was another turbo which is here being washed just before me. Anyways, let's do the outside. It needs a wash. We've got a clean car, we've got a clean car. Finally, it was filthy, it needed that. It's not spotless, spotless, because I didn't have anything to dry it, but it's better than it was. And now we can get on to talking about the five things that I hate about this car, which is a list that took me a long time to put together, because I really struggled to think about five things, to be honest. I absolutely love this car. I feel so incredibly fortunate to be able to drive around in this and I don't want this to come across as me complaining about this car that I'm lucky enough to drive. It is just, I know that it is of interest, five things that are maybe not ideal about this car. If you're looking to buy a Turbo S 901.2, it's probably good for you to know these five things. Anyways, after having lived this, with this car, the number one thing that frustrates me with it, and I think it's gonna be the most popular criticism of the Turbo S, is the noise. The exhaust noise of this car is disappointing. I mean, there's no other way about it. Right now I'm in normal, but even when you put it in sport, which is where it'll do little burbles, I mean, it's not terrible. If I slow down, you can hear it a bit. It does a few burbles. But when you are spending a lot of money, basically around 200,000 euros on a 580 horsepower supercar, you want a bit more than that. You want something a bit more exciting. And it would be nice if it came standard. I get that it's the ultimate daily driver supercar, so you don't want it making too much noise when you're in normal mode, but why not give us a bit more in sport mode? Just a little bit more. Other people have done it with turbo engines. I mean, it's easily fixable, and um, you can order an exhaust as I've done. My Quicksilver exhaust should be here soon, but it's slightly frustrating that you have to, you know, spend a lot of money on the car and then go off and you spend and, um, and get your own exhaust so that the noise is uh, decent on this car. So that is the first thing which frustrated me quite a bit, but will be fixed. Just to add on to that too, the Turbo S's do not have valves. So you do not have valves to be able to make it more noise. It makes more noise in sport, but that's just because the revs go up a little bit and uh, it's not a valved system. So that's a slight, you don't even have a button down here to be able to make it sound louder. Second thing that I find slightly annoying with this is, you know, obviously it is a supercar. It comes with the price tag of a supercar and often what you're paying for with a supercar is the performance and therefore the engine. So you want to be able to see what you're spending all that money on. And in the Turbo S, that is impossible. It is so cramped into the rear of this car, like all 911s, the engine is in the back. You have a tiny little engine hood, engine bay area that you can lift up. But when you lift that up, you don't see anything. It just kind of gives you, you know, 3.8 liter turbo S, a couple logos. You can tell that there's the turbos on top of the engine, but you cannot see anything. And it's just a little bit frustrating because you'd like to see basically what you're paying for. But it is what it is. And, you know, as I say, I am nitpicking here. It's nothing too, too bad. Third thing is one that confuses me a little bit more because obviously this car was developed so much with the ultimate daily driver supercar in mind but they clearly forgot to really really focus on the suspension on this car in normal mode as i am now the suspension is still really hard so i mean it's perfectly comfortable you can daily drive this car easily but competitors like the mclaren 570s or the ferrari 488 gtb have been able to fine-tune their suspension so that in the 
more normal street modes of those cars, they're really, really compliant. And it's actually pretty amazing in McLaren, for example, how compliant the suspension is. They haven't been able to do that in the turbo. The turbo, even in its sports mode, rides pretty hard. So when you're just driving it around as a daily, sometimes that can look here, a couple bumps. I mean, it's hard to translate through the camera, but you, you feel them go by and it'd be nice for it to be a little bit more adjustable. I mean, it means that the handling is really pleasant, obviously at high speeds, because you've got that hard suspension which is communicating everything through the steering wheel to you. But when cruising around, it would be nice if this car could have suspension which was equally as compliant as in slightly more hardcore sports cars. And it's a little bit surprising that it is that way actually. My fourth point is one which is um, a bit more unsurprising, a bit less surprising. It is that this car, when you're really on it, so for example, you know, on a road like this, if you go into sport mode, you knock down a couple of gears, and if you're really, really going for it and you come into a corner quick like this, especially downhill, you can tend to get a little bit of understeer. That is a small price to pay for the benefits of the four wheel drive. You know, you can go skiing, you can go to the mountains in this car, it feels perfectly comfortable in the rain. You can do launches and the acceleration, I mean, it will put the power down, bosh, and you're off. It's pretty incredible actually. But the downside you pay for that and for all the amenities you have inside the car which add weight are a bit of high end understeer in tight corners. And again, when you've got 580 horsepower supercar, that's something that you could do without. So if you're on track, I haven't taken this car on track yet. I imagine that's something which will translate a little bit more. And it's no biggie, but it's slightly frustrating. Now for my fifth five things I hate about this car, I decided to put together a bunch of little nitty gritty things, which are really not very important, but that when I was struggling to come up with things, uh, I thought of first of which are the lack of buttons down here. Why are there so many empty buttons? It's just not pretty to look at. And when you've basically got in, you know, the highest end, the Turbo S kind of sits all basically at the top of the food chain of 911s in terms of gadgets, everything. So you've got in the 911 with all the options, and yet you've got all these blank slots here, which I guess make you feel like you don't have all the options, but also mainly above all of that, just doesn't look nice. Why are there all these empty spots there i just think that's maybe you know up to me but i find that a little bit frustrating second thing practical thing when you're reversing this car you get a reverse camera up which will give you a little display um and it will give you all of the warnings you know the beeps basically the closer you get something there seems to be a little bit of a delay in that when it goes red on the screen and when the beeps really start yelling at you to stop it's already basically too late. So I find myself now kind of predicting when it's gonna go red, which kind of defeats the purpose. So I don't know if that's only my car, but there seems to be a delay in the parking sensors, which is slightly frustrating. One thing which we saw also this morning, which is, I don't, I still, I don't get why they didn't think of this. When you've got the keyless go option in this, you get this fixed key right here, um, which means you just keep the key in your pocket, all good, jolly good, nothing wrong with that. Keep the key in your pocket, car unlocks and locks if you're close to it, etc., etc. You start it, you don't need to get the key out of your pocket. That's all great. Then they added an option, which means that you can just swipe your hand over the front of the car, over the Porsche logo, basically just under it, and the front boot will open up if you've got the key in your pocket. Two things about that. One, leaves fingerprints all over the front of your car. Two, every time you're going over the front of the car with a power washer, the front boot opens and you end up just soaking everything in the front of the car. Which is, I mean, just seems like a pretty basic thing. It's quite annoying. I mean, it is nice when you've got your hands full of bags to be able to open the car from the front, but every time you're washing the car, you're terrified to go towards the front of it like I was this morning, because it'll just pop open every time. And then you get everything drenched inside. Can you tell that that one is slightly more fresh because I just experienced that? So close to the heart right now. And can you also tell that I've really been fishing for little things that frustrated me a little bit about this car because it is not easy to find. But that rounds up the list, guys, of the five things that I hate. I mean, hate's a strong word, but strongly dislike or just dislike about this car. Uh, it, was, it was a tricky one to find and I am so over the moon with the Turbo S. I mean, it just does everything perfectly and I have a much easier time doing five things I love about the Turbo S, but 
I guess that's more predictable and I've already spoken about that in other videos. If you'd like to see five things I love about the Toro S, comment down below. And if you'd like to see more five things I hate about this car or other cars, let me know. Please do subscribe if you are not already. It does really help the channel, as does a thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed it. And all I've got to say now is thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Cheers, bye-bye.